given a zero, do synthetic division, right? You're given the zero, that's how you set up synthetic division. So we do two, square root of three, that's my zero. And then you take the coefficients. Now again, remember guys, when you're doing synthetic division, you have to include your place value. So we don't have an x cubed, so guess what? We have to use zero. Negative 14, don't have an x, have to use zero. 24. However, I will tell you guys very, very quickly, once you guys try to do this with synthetic division, you realize that this might not have been the best idea. It just, because now what you're doing is you're adding like with radicals or with, yeah, with radical numbers, irrational numbers. And for some of you, that's going to easily trip you up. So I want to give you guys an alternative that does not involve radicals. Now you can do this this way, but you have to understand something else. If x is equal to 2 plus square root of 3, what else has to be a 0? Minus. Now why is that the case? Why do we know it? Well, let's forget about this method for a second. If this is the 0, what is my factor? If that is my 0, what is my factor? Well, guys, what do we do? We set it square root of 0. So we have x minus 2 square root of 3 equals 0. Right? So again, what is my factor? X minus 2. That is my factor. OK? Now, but we got to think about this. Um, how, how do we just get the negative square root of 3? And again, what this comes into, guys, is like, let's think about another, let's think about something easy. x squared minus 1. If I said to solve this, you guys would get x squared equals 1, square root, square root, and you get x is equal to plus or minus 1. Why plus or minus 1? Because positive 1 squared equals 1, and negative 1 squared equals 1. So you have to include both of those solutions. Make sense? Let's do the next one. x squared minus 2 equals 0. You'd add 2 to both sides. x squared equals 2. You take the square root. x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Y plus or minus. Because the square root of 2 squared equals 2. And negative square root of 2 squared equals 2. Both of those values, plus or minus, make those equations true. Correct? So what that means, guys, is whenever you have a 0 or as a factor negative square root, then the positive square root also exists. They come in what we call conjugate pairs. Wherever there's a positive, there's a negative. Wherever there's a negative, there's a positive. They are conjugate pairs. They're always going to be connected. So what's important about that is in this problem, if I'm given x equals 2 radical 3, then what else am I given? x equals negative 2 radical 3. So if you wanted to do synthetic division, you would do it just like we did in the previous example with those two zeros. I don't prefer to do synthetic division, though, in this example. What I prefer to do is say, well, if that is my one factor, then this factor would be x plus 2 square root of 3. And therefore, remember we talked about you could take the two factors, x minus 1, x plus 1, and multiply them. Right? You can do the same thing here. So let's do this. x minus 2 square root of 3 times x plus 2 square root of 3. Now, if you did my preparing for polynomials work, you would have gotten practice on multiplying the difference of two squares. And what you guys would have recognized is these are conjugates. Conjugates are differences of two squares, right? Or they create a difference of two squares and you multiply them. So instead of actually doing FOIL, you just need to multiply the first and the second term. So you get x squared, and let's see, this is going to be minus 4 times 3 which is really x squared minus 12, which is also a factor. And guess what, guys? Now that we have a factor, can we use long division? Yes. Again, you could use synthetic division if you prefer. But I'm going to do long division because I think it's easier than doing synthetic division for this example. Now, I don't have an x cubed. So some of you might prefer to use an x cubed as a place value. That's perfectly fine. I'm not going to for this example, just for time purposes. All right, but let's follow the same process. How many times does x squared divide into x to the fourth? x squared times. You put it up top. x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. 
x squared times a negative 12x is going to be a negative 12x squared. Parentheses, subtract. x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0x to the fourth. Negative 14x squared minus a negative 12x squared is now going to be negative 2x squared. How many times is x squared divided into a negative 2x squared? Negative 2 times. Negative 2 times x squared is a negative 2x squared. You can bring down the 24. Negative 2 times negative 12 is a positive 24. Subtract the rows, and you guys get again 0. So again, we already knew this was a factor. But this divides into that this many times. So that means this is also a factor. Is it a linear factor? No, it's not a linear factor. But could we now find this, can we now find this factor set equal to 0 to solve? Yes. And hopefully you guys see that x is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. So what are the zeros? One zero was given to us. Was the other zero really easy to find? Yeah. Could you do synthetic division with both of them to find the other ones? Fine. Could you also write them as factors and then multiply them and then find the other zero? Yes. So those are your zeros. So you could say these zeros are plus or minus 2 radical 3 and plus or minus 2 square root of 2. And if I asked you to find the linear factorization, now this one's not as bad, so I would expect you guys could be able to do this. 